The director of the zoo was very worried about Lorenzo. He said to me, You know, I'm very worried about Lorenzo. After watching him the other day kicking and biting the public, well, we can't have things like that going on. You know, kicking and biting. Whatever next? And I said, Well, sir, you know, Lorenzo just lost his head for a minute. Everybody was patting him and stroking him, and I think it upset him. I don't think he'll do it again. Oh, don't you? Well, um, I hope not. I'll give him one more chance. Take him out again and then hurry up and get him properly acclimatized. I want Lorenzo so that he can pull the llama cart. I want him established. Established, sir? Yes, established. And so I went around to get Lorenzo. And I put his halter on and took him out into the zoo. And I said to him, Now, this is your last chance, Lorenzo. The boss says that you should be acclimatized by now. He wants you to become a properly established llama, fit to pull the llama cart. Oh, dear. What's established? Well, you know, Lorenzo, it means settled down and reliable. You must behave so that people can trust you, always. No biting and no kicking. Do you see what I mean? Oh, yes, I see what you mean. Oh, dear, how can I show that I'm reliable and to be trusted? Well, it's up to you, Lorenzo. It's up to you. Just then, Current Bun and Grumble Hump strolled by on their way to give elephant rides and camel rides. Current Bun said, Oh, good morning, Current Bun. And Grumble Hump said, Ah, good morning, Lorenzo. <laughs> oh, good morning, Grumble Hump. And as they walked away, we heard them say to one another, Hmm, nice young llama, that, you know. Yes, very nice. Pity he bites and kicks, though. Hmm, bites and kicks, does he? Oh, does he really? Mm. He'll never get established like us if he bites and kicks. Oh, no, I'm afraid not, <laughs> You've got to be very careful with the public. Mm. Oh, yes. You've got to be very careful with the public. And Lorenzo started to cry. Oh, I want to be established. It's not fair. I want to be <laughs> but Lorenzo wasn't the only one crying. No, for around the corner came a little boy in a school cap, and he came up to us rubbing his eyes and sobbing. Oh, yeah, that bird over there, that bird over there, he got my new fountain pen. <laughs> I only had it yesterday for my birthday, and now that bird has got it, and he won't give it back. I knew exactly which bird he meant. He meant Nutcracker, the cockatoo. And so we all went to see Nutcracker, and sure enough, Nutcracker was holding in his wrinkled grey claws a lovely new fountain pen. And I said, now, come on, Nutcracker. That's not your fountain pen. Give it back. And Nutcracker said, No! No! It's mine! I'm going to crack it up! You're not to crack it up, Nutcracker. Oh, yes, I will! <laughs> and Nutcracker put the fountain pen into his great hooked beak. There was no doubt that he was going to crack the fountain pen up, and he could do it easily. Nutcracker could crack great big nuts, just like that, and he could easily crush my finger if he wanted to, 
I had to be very careful, and I said again, Oh, please give the fountain pen back, Nutcracker. No! No! He was teasing me! Well, even if he was teasing you, Nutcracker, there's no need to crack it up. He's very sorry that he teased you, Nutcracker, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, please give me my pen back. It's got a 14-carat gold nib in it. <laughs> I'm very fond of carrots. <laughs> and slowly and deliberately, Nutcracker closed his grey, steely beak around the fountain pen. And he was laughing all the time. <laughs> when suddenly... He went, and dropped the pen. Someone had done something. It was Lorenzo. While we had been pleading with Nutcracker, Lorenzo had crept round behind him and very gently pulled his tail. And Nutcracker hates having his tail pulled. And he dropped the pen. And then we heard someone say, well done, Lorenzo. Very well done. It was the director of the zoo. He'd been watching from his office window. <laughs> you seem to be well on the way to being a reliable and trustworthy llama. And Lorenzo said to me, Oh, does that mean that I will be established? Hmm? And I said, Well, it looks like it, Lorenzo. It certainly looks like it. Early one morning, the director of the zoo sent for me, and he said, Ah, I'm happy to tell you that I'm reasonably satisfied with Lorenzo. He's nearly established now, and I think that perhaps he may pull the llama cart. Not to give llama cart rides, mind you, not yet, oh no. Just to pull the cart empty, so that he can get used to it. And I said, Oh, good, sir. I'm glad you think so. I'm sure Lorenzo will do his best. So I got the llama harness and put it on Lorenzo and took him around to the shed where the llama cart was kept. And I hitched him to the cart and said, There, how does that feel, Lorenzo? Oh, it feels ever so strange. Does it, Lorenzo? Never mind, you'll soon get used to it. See, if you can pull the llama cart, Lorenzo. And Lorenzo pulled, and the llama cart followed after him. Is it very heavy for you, Lorenzo? No, it's as easy as easy to pull. <laughs> Good. Well, let's go around the zoo. And we set off around the zoo. Lorenzo pulling the llama cart for the first time in his life down the gravel path. Oh, this is smashing. It's smashing. <laughs> it's as easy as easy to pull. That's good. Now, not too fast, Lorenzo. We've got plenty of time. Lorenzo, not too fast. Lorenzo, Lorenzo, look where you're going. Oh, oh Lorenzo, stop, stop. Stop? Why? What's the matter? What's the matter, Lorenzo? Just look. Oh, I didn't do that. Yes, you did, Lorenzo. Look. And right down the edge of the lovely green lawn was a deep, nasty wheel mark. A horrible wheel mark made by the wheels of Lorenzo's cart. And the mark went right past the notice saying, Keep off the grass. I didn't do it. I wasn't on the grass. No, you weren't on the grass, Lorenzo, but your cart was. The first thing you must remember when you pull a cart is that it is much wider than yourself. Oh, dear. What will everybody say? Hmm? Everybody had quite a lot to say. The head gardener said, All drat! All drat! 
Just look what that llama has been and gone and went and done. Just look what that llama has been and gone and went and done. And the boss said, Take that llama back to his quarters at once. And Lorenzo said, Oh dear, oh dear. And a big crowd gathered to see the wheel mark on the lawn. And then we heard someone go, <laughs> It was Nutcracker, the cockatoo. He had broken free from his perch. Somehow or other, he had undone the chain that held him to his perch, and he was flying around the zoo with his chain trailing behind him. <laughs> Lorenzo, stop your eyes, stop your eyes. <laughs> And he flew over the open-air cafe, and his chain clattered across a tea tray that a waitress was carrying, and the teapot and the cups and the saucers and the milk and the sugar and the pink cakes went crashing to the ground. Then along came Currant Bun and Grumble Hump. And Currant Bun said, Leave it to me all, leave it to me all, I... I'm a well-established elephant. I will deal with Nutcracker. And Current Bun was very clever. As Nutcracker flew over him with his chain hanging down, Current Bun simply lifted up his trunk and caught Nutcracker's chain. Well, I got you, my boy. <laughs> oh, but he hadn't because Nutcracker swooped down and bit poor old Currant Bun right on the end of his trunk. And Currant Bun said, Oh, 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 I see, oh, oh, that's my nose, oh, mm. And he had to let Nutcracker go, and the keeper had to put a big white bandage on his trunk. And Currant Bun said, Oh, yeah, a fellow feels such a fool. With his hooter bound up. And no one could catch Nutcracker, not even the director. Nutcracker had stopped flying around now because the chain was rather heavy, and he was resting on the path. But everyone was frightened to go near him because he was in a very bad temper, and he was shouting, Get back! Go on! Get back! Go on! Get back! When suddenly... Lorenzo trotted towards him, pulling the llama cart, and he stopped the cart about two yards away from Nutcracker, with the big back wheel of the cart firmly on top of Nutcracker's chain, and Nutcracker was caught. He couldn't fly away, and so he gave in. He had been caught by Lorenzo, and the boss was very pleased indeed. He said, well done, Lorenzo. You judged that beautifully. You stopped the cart right on Nutcracker's chain. Mm -hmm. And Lorenzo whispered to me, am I, am I properly established now? And I said, yes, I think so, Lorenzo. I think so. <laughs> <laughs>